This is Dr. Peterson talking to Dawson Roselle, who is our uh, person in charge of restoring the PDP-12, and we actually have it running, and um, it seems like the accumulator and, and at least memory, basic memory operations are working. So this seems like a good time to do a little video, show us turning on the machine, show the console lighting up, and, and kind of the basic very basic things you can do with the console at this time. So, Dawson, um, tell us, what is this thing here that uh, it's plugged into? Uh, this is just a Variac uh, running from the wall. Um, just a big uh, potentiometer controlling the voltage from the wall. I don't actually have the keys right now for the PDP. They're uh, MIA at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually um, sitting in my van. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah. Uh, and so whoever had the keys in there actually left it at the on position, so the Variac is my on-off switch right now. Oh, I get it. Okay, yep. that makes sense. That's why you need the keys. Yep. Okay, um, so we can turn it on with the Variac, and right now it's obviously set at, you know, 120, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, roughly. Roughly. Plus or minus 5. Okay. So um, let's, let's turn it on, and it's going to get a lot noisier. All right, we've got a bunch of big fans in here. Um, not a whole lot to see inside the, the box itself, but our console, we now have lights. And I'm going to get down here and Dawson's going to talk to us about how the console works. Okay, well, so I haven't had enough time to really dive into everything. Yeah, of course. Um, but the these left switches here are your memory address, um, and then these are the data that you'd be putting into that memory address. And the PDP-12 is 12-bit, 12 correct? Yes. Okay, yep. so you told us earlier when, when we were talking about this, these are octal, so yeah. 3333 gives us 12 bits of address space, and then 12 bits of uh, data correct. we can specify to go into that. Uh, yeah. Address. And so that, that really makes putting instructions in a lot easier, because um, then you don't have to put in, you know, 12 binary numbers. You can just represent it as a four-digit octal number. Sure, sure, um, sure. So we're currently at address zero. Okay, and and uh, not to interrupt you, sorry. This is the zero position for every yes. bit. Okay. Yes. And so uh, least significant bit is on the right. So if we wanted okay. to go to address one. We can hit that and examine. Okay. And then we're at address one. And this is our data that's in address one. Okay, so address one has the value seven. Right. <laughs> um, and so if we want to go back to, or if we actually just want to even cycle through it, we can just cycle through our memory registers. I had a, I had a bunch of sevens loaded in earlier. Right, right. Um, so we'd go back to zero. And yep. let's uh, load in some arbitrary number, fill, and then if we hit examine, it should stay the same. Yep. And if we go to another address and then go back, yep. it should still be that arbitrary value yep. that I put in. Now, one thing you told me earlier that I had no idea is that core memory is non-volatile. Yes. Um, and that has to do with the, uh, the ferrite, the, the magnetic cores, uh, since they are iron, little iron donuts, essentially. Yeah. Um, Delicious. Yum. <laughs> the uh, direction of the magnetic field flowing through it does not change when the power is turned off. And so if it's rotating this way or if it's rotating the other way, yeah. it represents a one or a zero. Awesome. Now, I'm a, I'm a software guy, not a hardware guy. Uh, and you might not know the answer to this, but is it non-volatile, like, permanently non-volatile? Or do you know if it changes, like, on the order of days, hours, decades? I believe it's It's okay for you want to punt I, it. I, I don't know. I think it's permanent. Okay. Um, Interesting. Because, I mean, if we... I don't think I ever touch this address and we could go there. And sure. That number has probably been there since 1973. Interesting. Interesting. I'm sure if we're wrong about this, someone will tell us. Please do. <laughs> um, so just 
Let's go back a second and, yeah. and go. we'll go back to zero and examine it. Now let's set zero into the address space. Let's go through and set the address into the each memory address. So currently the data, uh, so, um, but that's not zero, right? So this, this, this is the number that's in address zero. So we're in address zero right yeah. now. Right, so what I'm saying is let's set address zero yep. to zero. Oh, to zero. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Because right now, we before we were monkeying around with the yeah. machine, we had a bunch of threes in there. Okay. Yep. So you just pushed... Um, fill. Fill. Okay, so... Whoops, I can't actually see what I'm doing. Fill. Okay. So the fill button here fills the, the address with the data that's there. Fill step would go through... So if we wanted to actually zero a bunch of memory, we can use fill step and it's going to go through and it's showing us what was there, but it's zeroing it all out. So now if we go back to um, examine zero, we see there's nothing there. And just like there's fill step, there's step exam. So if we step exam, we're going to see a bunch of zeros because we essentially wiped the first several uh, addresses. Would, would you say that's accurate? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to exam and it's set to zero. So let's go to address one and set it to binary one. One and fill it with one. Okay. And then um, we can go to address two and fill it with two. Oh, hope that's the wrong button. Okay. And now if we went back to zero, and we examine, we don't actually have to change this because we're just examining. Now that's zero. If we do exam step, one, two, and so on, okay? Um, so we could, if we go to, let's see, we did two, right? So examine two, did we do three? Not yet, okay. So, um, well, let's just do this. We'll go to zero and we'll set it to zero. We'll do fill step, okay? So now um, it should be addressing one. Um, because you were currently at two, fill step actually oh. uh, filled and went from two to three. I see. Yeah. I see. Well, okay, so can we, basically we don't have to change the um, address location, we can just set the data now if we use fill step. Yeah. Is that correct? From okay. the current address that you're at. Right. So, um, why don't we go ahead and set the data in for that address? Zero? Sure. So, well, so fill actually would take us back to zero. Fill step would continue from Oh, the right. Okay. So we could just cycle through and set everything to zero here. Um, it's wiping out those threes on the right. So this might be a good place to okay. go back. Okay. And we can, since that's still set to zero, we can go back to zero. Yep. And then step through it. Yep. And then that's about where I stopped. Cool. Um, and so the other thing that we can, uh, the other thing we've tried was. Uh, Incrementing the accumulator, which the instruction for that is uh, 7001. Okay. Um, and then if we get the do switch, yep. then the accumulator increases. Cool. And the accumulator started out at zero yes. when we turned on the machine. Yep. Okay. Very cool. So uh, we do have some. Um, if I want to just examine memory, do we need to change some of these switches or something? Um, so this, oh, so this, uh, this also controls the instruction register. Okay. Um, so when I hit do, it loaded that yeah. 7001. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. So if we wanted to go back to zero and examine, okay. but then that is out of the instruction register. Okay. So I just wanted to show kind of one of the next steps for us is... Um, you know, this machine is almost 50 years old, um, so some of the light bulbs are burned out. So if we examine, you know, the highest address this machine can support, which of course we don't even have memory to support that address, um, because 
we only have 4K of memory, yeah. and this 12K address is going to be way beyond that. Um, but what you can see is we're missing a light bulb here. So um, Dawson is working on figuring out what model, you know, uh, incandescent light bulb we can find and source that will work in the location in the console. And we're, we're talking about potentially just replacing all the bulbs. Um, I don't know, that's kind of the next thing that we're working on. But um, in the meantime, we also have the CRT. Um, this sign is for interlopers. Um, and the two tape drives that uh, we need to potentially reform capacitors and, and do other things before we dare power them up. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this little tour of the running machine, and thanks to Dawson for um, bringing it to life, uh, and especially thanks to Michael from Rhode Island uh, Computer Museum and all the people who are helping us with this project. All right, thanks. Bye.